Hello, friends, and welcome. I'm going to change the angle. I was going to say, it's next month, the angle. Bloody hell. Now my elbow is in the... Oh, look at that. Sorry. Well, hello, friends, and welcome to Ariel's Twilight Years, how to be a really, really, really old model. Last month, which was... Two minutes, ago, two minutes ago, we discussed how to go about marrying a fetish model, in case you might want to do that. This month, we are discussing whether or not you might actually want to marry a fetish model, because I'm not sure it's always that much fun. So first of all, one reason why you might or might not want to marry a fetish model, depending on your point of view, is that she will probably be away roughly 50% of the time. I actually do that on a formal basis. I tour for two weeks out of four, and I schedule my life so that I reliably am home two weeks weeks out of four. One week working for Howl and one week working for myself. But even if you are with a model who has a more fluid approach, I think that quite often it will work out as about 50% of the time. Yeah, uh, it, it'll either work out that she's properly away away, or it may well work out that she's at home but completely unavailable, as in yeah. she's got to be upstairs, locked in a bedroom, doing webcam or shooting customs or something like, she probably might as well not be there. You will certainly not have access to her no. as much as you maybe would a partner with a 95 standard 95 yes. job. Yes, and obviously this can be a negative because you can miss each other. Yep. It can also be a positive because it means that for the two weeks I go away, you can eat all the things I don't like eating. You can work till midnight without me being in your way and you can schedule activities without considering whether I want to do them or yes. not. Yes, if you are the sort of person who desperately misses your partner after a few days, this life is not for you. It's properly like marrying someone who works on the oil rigs. Yes, it probably is. They, they, yeah. they go away, they do something. They do something where you actually, you. It's, I'm sure it's not anything like as dangerous as being on the oil rigs, but nonetheless, you are meeting lots and lots and lots of strangers and doing uh, potentially dangerous stuff like bondage. When you're miles away and there's nothing I could do about so it. So if you're the sort of partner who, who would find that sort of thing worries, terribly stressful, then... Then it's not then, for yeah. you. I think it suits me because I'm quite introverted. And so having two weeks to peacefully get on with stuff on my own, I think for us it's a much better fit that you go away than you bring people to the house to shoot you. Sure. Two yes. weeks out of four. I, that personally would not cope with. This is a reason why you should marry a fetish model. This is my favourite because she's very likely to be quite uninhibited and quite experimental in the bedroom. This, I think, is a very good thing unless you really don't want that because fetish models, what we get to do is we get to go and sample other people's sexualities on a daily basis. So I get to work with people who have kinks that are maybe similar to mine, but maybe different from things that I'd considered trying before. And so I quite often come home from tours with many ideas about things that we should try. So I'm doing a bit of sexual advertising for fetish models at the moment. So fetish models in general, me in particular, that I think fetish models are excellent wives because we have many sexual ideas because we are working in the sexual arena and we're probably not embarrassed to try them. Yeah. Isn't it super, darling? I completely concur. Fucking super. I mean, I'm assuming that some fetish models sometimes come home a bit burned out. Yes, Personally, because... it doesn't happen to me. No. The opposite happens to me. But with a yeah. different character from mine, possibly the opposite might sometimes happen. But I think as a general principle that you'll probably have yes. some good sex. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Lovely. <laughs> Moving on. I'd like you to talk about this one because this is one that I don't think actually ever particularly did bother you. But please tell us. Oh, no, it's not true. It, it, oh. it oh. took quite a mental adjustment for me. Oh. You have to be comfortable with the fact that other people will be buying your wife gifts and they will be doing so in quite a romanticised stroke sexualised context. You know, they, mm, they, some, people, some people might buy you a laptop if you're very lucky. No. Um, but by far the most likely is that they will be buying her sexy underwear and necklaces and all the things that in our culture we more commonly associate with stuff that goes on when you're dating or you're So it could somewhere. be a bit threatening and it could be a bit emasculating? Yeah, well, it's just a bit peculiar. I mean, I remember talking to the husband of a model friend of ours who is a plumber and just, like, nobody gives him, <laughs> like... He, ha, 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 have some flowers. Have, have some flowers or ten lengths of copper tubing, you know. I no. do not know of another 
professional area of endeavour that has the sheer volume of gifts showered upon you, and not just from fans, from professional content you are working with, because yes. it's not at all unusual for you to come away from a photo shoot with a bunch of flowers, a box of chocolates, no. or a tray full of cakes, or something like that. And just like you do I not like do it. that if you are an IT consultant going to consult on the latest SaaS database or something, you would not expect your employer to give you a big box of hotel chocolat at the end of your day's consulting. So I think that in order to counter that a little by saying that if you are a partner of a model who finds this a little concerning, I would say to you, as I said to Howell back when we started dating, that actually it's not unique. It is show business. So I was a mainstream actor before I worked in this field. And actually this is what happens in movies and stage production in PR. Um, possibly not to the same extent and possibly the gifts are slightly different but actually it's not unique to people fancying fetish models which hopefully maybe gives you a little bit of comfort if it's something that you are finding a little difficult to adjust to. <laughs> Another thing that I think probably was one of the hardest things for us, well for Howell when we started dating, is that if you date or marry a fetish model she is likely to be online far more than you would ever have expected. Yeah, like properly 90% of waking hours when not actually deprived of the ability to do it by having to put your phone down to be on camera. And it's not because she doesn't love you, probably. Probably. Um, <laughs> it's because it's not a job that has set hours. So all the emailing, which is what gives her future work, has yeah. to happen when she's not shooting. So that's outside normal office hours. All the marketing, publicity, booking flights. Yeah buying yeah, costume it, it all has to happen it's very involved and i think it's it's one of the things that we realized earlier on the reason that this happens more than anything else is that there are few other contracting jobs where the longest your contracting job is likely to last is a day or two you have to find an, an enormous number of customers and that takes time and that takes time yeah and just having having customer relations organizing shoots organizing custom videos publicising what you're, all of this takes an enormous amount of time. Thank you. You might want to comment on this one, although it was my idea, I can't comment on it because I'm not sure how it feels. Uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> she might not want to go out much. Um, <laughs> now, we're not party people or nightclub people, so, yeah, that's fine. And so, so that's fine. But bear in mind that, as we've already said, she will have been away for two weeks. In those two weeks, she will not have had a moment to herself while she's modelling, because she's either being her customer service self for the photographer, or being her customer service self answering her emails, as we've just described, or she's had to go out for dinner with the photographer. She might be staying with she the She might be staying yeah. with the photographer, so she's been her on-duty self, probably 18 hours a day, for two weeks. So if you want her, as soon as you get home, to want to get dolled up, go out on the town and celebrate, the chances are is that what she's actually going to want to do is to unpack her bag, take her makeup off, put her pyjamas on, go to bed early. And obviously for some people that's fine, for some people that might be a deal breaker, so we thought it was worth mentioning that possibly your perception of a fetish model, if you've never dated one, is that she is all about the nightclubs. She might be, but she might well be the absolute opposite, as am I. Another thing that I sometimes feel a little conflicted about is that she may well have been to most of the holiday destinations you are considering and if she has she may well have been at some very expensive resorts and because a photographer has yeah. paid for that to happen and I think as a result if I were dating a fetish model I would feel a little bit like what's the point of having a holiday you've already yeah yeah it's, I mean it's, I hope it doesn't no, feel too much like that it's, oh let's go on safari we can afford to go on a, a nice little modest safari it's a bit deflating yes well when I was taken on my first class Kenyan safari for a week by a photographer staying in all the first class oh. yeah uh, uh, as it happens I don't I don't really care because actually the um, sorts of holidays that we like are quite different from the sort of places I go to shoot yeah which is um, lucky it actually, because as a working scientist, I travelled the world pretty extensively to the point that I got sick of commuting to Europe. But if we got together when you were like 25, 
yeah, I might be excited to go to I'd all been these 16, places. Weird. Yeah, but, but and it might know, be I really said, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd really like to go to Munich, and you'll trot out, oh, yes, I've been there 87 times. And, and uh, I stayed at the most Europe. expensive hotel. Yeah. 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 Would you like to talk about this one, please? Something that I've alluded to before, given that if a model's been working hard and building up her support base for a few years, she may well be earning, uh, at least making a turnover of 100000 a year. If you're a similar sort of age, Age to her, there are not very many things that a 25 year old or a 28 year old can be doing that generates a hundred thousand pounds a year. That means she will probably be earning more than you are, and which could be a wonderful thing because, in that some of the model relationships that we know of, the model is earning lots, and as a result, they're having a fabulous lifestyle, they're going and doing wonderful things together. So, it can be beautiful and wonderful, but if you are someone who is very insecure about your role and your status and who has quite traditional ideas about gender roles, I imagine it might be Yeah, so be honest with yourself, you know, there's nothing wrong with having been brought up with the, the fairly traditional gender roles and you may think to yourself, oh, it'll be fine, but realising that maybe she might suggest going on holiday to somewhere that you can't afford, how is that going to make you feel? It's worth facing up to that. The corollary is, she may well be higher paid. Don't think you can spend all her money. <laughs> For the love of God, she is higher paid. And it's her business to decide how that is spent properly. Like, even if you're yeah. married, you don't get to laze around like a great fat old mangy lion <laughs> watching your lioness go out and make all the money. And you don't get to spend her money on a random camera because you've no. decided you're a photographer now. No. I mean, you actually are a photographer. Yes. But Howell never spends my money on cameras. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Uh, mm. So, yeah, yeah, be honest with yourself. You'll have to... You'll have to figure out what you're going to do if she wants to go to Bali and you figure out that you can't afford to. And I think it would be perfectly reasonable to say that and say, can you help pay if that's yeah, where you want to go? Yeah, either, so either but you're, you're going to have to have the conversation. Yeah. You don't want to get in debt pretending that you earn Exactly, money. exactly. which is the sort of thing that I think some people, out of kind of mistaken male pride, is thinking it's a cultural thing, yeah. they might actually do it, say, oh yeah, 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 let's do it, let's do it, put it on a credit yeah. card and get into trouble, don't do that. Yeah. And for us, I don't think the dynamics of our relationship has changed much, even though when we first got together, you were earning a, a lot more than me, and yeah. now it's swung a little the other way. I don't think it's actually changed the personal dynamics, but I can see for some people it really might. And finally, this is disappointing, but I have to say it because I want you to be prepared in case you start dating a fetish model. She's very unlikely to want to dress up in stockings and suspenders in real life in the bedroom. I'm sorry. It's because it's like a work uniform. It feels like having a name tag on. I'm glad that it's not particularly your thing. No, no. Um, I'm, I'm, glad, I... I'm glad that the things that are my thing, <laughs> they are some of your modern clothes. And it has, it has occasionally been, yeah. oh gosh, I don't want to do that. That's, that's like work. <laughs> but at least it's not the most common thing that you wear at most shoots. No. And I'm sure if your thing really is stockings and suspenders, I'm sure your wife would I'm be sure willing I would. to... to do that but i but i probably wouldn't find it actively sexy and i think yes. that's the difference because clearly a lot of women go to ann summers they buy stuff that their husband will like and they feel really excited about it too yes i would just be doing it for you it's yes, not sexy it's, not it's sexy. my uniform. of course it's not sexy it's not to say i wouldn't do it for you but if you were expecting me to get excited by it then you would be very disappointed yes so those are Pieces of input from Howell and me about why you might or might not want to marry a fetish model. Having listened to all that, please do let me know in the comments below whether you think it's a good deal or not. <laughs> I, would, I would just say it's not for everybody. And be honest with yourself hearing this. Like The fantasy is great for everybody. Awesome. The reality of it... Is not seeing your wife for half the time. Then she'll come home, refuse to wear any stockings and suspenders, boast about how much money she's made, and then open a load of presents from other people. Which is actually true. <laughs> actually true and then she'll have experimental sex with you hopefully with you <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing it really is mm. so thank you as always for joining me Jocelyn Stroke Ariel and Howell who's been guesting on twice this. now which wasn't the deal and I didn't disclose this to him before but this is very exciting we had an argument yesterday about which of us talks more Howell is absolutely sure that it's me now I have half an hour of footage in which I can actually analyse how much talk you've you made me talk you've actually said do you want to talk about that when did i say do you want to talk about this statistics
do not lie. Thank you, as always, for joining. I didn't do it on purpose. I just suddenly thought of it. Um, <laughs> I will be back next month, probably on my own, probably in a hotel room talking about something. Thank you, as always, for being here. And bye-bye. Bye-bye.